Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to the American Investor Show. Please click subscribe if this is your first time listening. From trader and CEO interviews to breaking news about companies you won't hear anywhere else, nobody does a better job at keeping you in the know when it comes to penny stocks. The term penny stock generally refers to a security issued by a very small company that trades at less than $5 per share. Penny stocks are extremely risky, yet they offer rates of return on investment not seen anywhere else. The host, guest, and callers are not registered financial advisors licensed by any government entity, and therefore, the following should be considered entertainment. The host, guest, and callers disclaim all liability in the event any information, commentary, analysis, opinions, advice, and or recommendations prove to be inaccurate, incomplete, or unreliable, or result in any investment losses. Before investing in penny stocks, you should consult a professional to determine what strategy may be best for your individual needs. Now, without further ado, your host, LaSalle Anungu. Favorite stocks for 2003. Uh, not even favorite. Well, I, I showed them to you today, right? Uh, I'm hugely bullish on Japan. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry about that. I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. So go ahead and refresh, 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 refresh. Uh, if you can hear me or you can't see me, uh, I'm back on the line or on the air whatever you want to say uh, for whatever reason my mic my mic wasn't plugged in so I had to restart the thing for whatever reason so uh, God, why are you texting me she know I'm, I'm on my show and then she's like oh, God, man. what's going on guys Kenneth Rosenberg Carlos Robles poker pro Charlotte Hammock Felix Sapini Jose Cornell, Trevor Proby, Gucci, shout out to all the people, Jay Bino, all the people, DPG, all the people in the house tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Monday on the markets, and I think I got a caller, Ken, already on the line. What's going on, Ken? <laughs> I'm very eager to talk to you tonight. I, You know, this whole thing with the block, block uh, cryptocurrency, blockchain, take a look at R I O T and M A R K. These are not OTCs. They're Nasdaq ones. They're moving, and they're probably going to move a lot more. Yeah. So okay. So w what is this company about? Because I think this is a, a relatively new ticker. What exactly which, is, which one? is this? This the R I O T, the riot one. The riot one. Let's take a look here. You mentioned uh, Riot Blockchain, R-I-O-T. Right, right, yeah, yeah. That one, I mean, look at that. It's like a W formation chart. I mean, where, where's that going to go? Nice small float. Yeah. I, I, uh, if you go back, um, just go back like a couple of years, you could see the old highs were anywhere from 14 to 28. So I think we got more room here. I, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't done the due diligence. I, I've just seen this, these two tickers day after day after day after day on the, on the hot list. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to know what exactly they do. I don't want to compare them to the past because, I mean, they might be completely different companies. And, and yes, right. uh, I'm yep. not sure what their businesses are. It's called Riot Blockchain. It's listed as a biotech play, but I mean, the name doesn't have anything. <laughs> Uh, to do with with what it's uh, you know the sector supposedly it's supposed to be in so I'm kind of curious as to know uh, but I mean look we've Ooh. seen some of these Nasdaq start running like OTC stocks so 
Right, yeah. uh, the scam has, has uh, grown. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. But look, it's a small float. Uh, if people are excited about right. it, you can squeeze some people who are a little bit too pessimistic too soon. And, uh, you know, this stock can end up going even higher. And uh, that's just kind of what it is right now. Right. I'm, I, was just, I just quickly went on Finviz. So they, they entered an agreement for acquisition of 1,200 Bitcoin mining machines on November 2nd. Um, they had a five-part series on CBS Interactive this week, listed on November 15th. And so at least they, they keep coming out with news. And like you said, small float, 18% short the float. Mm -hmm. So that's why it moves. Okay, great, great. Um, the, the, other, the other one is MARK. Take a look at that one. Yeah, that's MARK, on yeah, piece. listed one of the biggest gainers on the chart right now. Uh, this has been a multiple day situation where it's been on the on the top gainers on, on the exchanges. Uh, MRK small small float and you know it's going higher and you know people who want it are keeping it. And uh, right now you're pretty hot on that RSI 89 on the RSI, but um, yeah, people still loving it, man. Yeah, it's just interesting. I mean, this Bitcoin in general, what, 8,200? It just, it, it's funny, last weekend it was at 5,800. That was the buying opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bit what Bitcoin is doing now is absolutely incredible. And what's yeah. crazy is that Bitcoin is a 24-hour exchange. So you're going to have people who are going to be at home eating turkey with the family, and they're going to be watching their phones to keep track of what's <laughs> going on with Bitcoin. I mean, that's basically right. how, how it's going to be. And I don't doubt that this train is going to continue to move higher. So we're going to see 9,000, if not probably by the end of the week uh, on Black Friday. I think it's definitely a possibility, 9,000 uh, Bitcoin. One of the catalysts is that law that Congress is trying to pass through for $600 or less transactions not being taxed on the uh, using Bitcoin. Well, That's I, what I had read on. Yeah, it possibly could be, or it just could be the fact that it's just it's just hot, man. It's just, it is what it is right now. It's pulled back, what, a lot, 100 bucks right now. It's been nothing. Every pullback in Bitcoin has been a, another opportunity to buy. Uh, I, I think 10000 is that sentimental mark. Let's see how it holds 10000 uh, and whether or not it keeps going on from there. I think that's that's the big thing everybody wants to take a look at now. Definitely. definitely. I mean, one of the reasons I'm just focused on this is that this, the OTC market in the last I don't know, a month or two. I mean, you, know, you get a few winners, but a lot of them, like, look at BYOC, that broke below two cent support today. Mm -hmm. Then you had the scam ECMH that crashed last week. You had the other scam HRRC mm -hmm. crashed. Money's coming out of the people in, in there's better places to make money with less risk, I think. Well, what's going on right, right now? Yeah, what's going on right now is I wouldn't be surprised that a lot of these Bitcoin guys have moved over to crypto. It just makes a lot of perfect sense. You know, you, we got to understand many of them are, are, are who trade OT, they love to gamble, right? I mean, these are some of the yeah, worst exactly. companies right. out there. So right now, I mean, to get involved in a situation where you've got crypto running, you can place your money there. You're literally winning by not doing anything. You can forget it, right. sleep on it, whatever it is. And then you wake up and you're in profit. Uh, you know, it, that's you, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. So. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we're losing a little bit of uh, volume uh, to the crypto space. Yeah, it's uh, really, really good. Can I just add, mention, can you can you give me uh, your your thoughts on Twitter? I mean, we had another update. I mentioned I had some calls on that. Yeah, January, I uh, remember you bringing that up to me. Look, I, I, I like Twitter because even if the earnings were great and I think it was a little bit of an overreaction, it, it, you know, it sold off since then. But it didn't, I mean, look, it held 19. I mean, held 1950s or so. So now we're looking uh, to test those highs. I mentioned you had said your calls were for 23. I said 23. Yeah, 23. January. And there's no doubt 22. in my mind you're going to get the 22s uh, because they said that, hey, look, this could be the first earnings announcement, the very next one, where they're going to actually reach profitability. So that's, that's huge. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. uh, if you read, yeah, if you definitely read the, the call from the one they just posted. Uh, that's that's the big thing uh, looking forward uh, for Twitter. So I, I think you're going to get in the money with that. Just be a little bit patient. What's your time on that? Uh, January monthly, January 17, uh, January, okay, 2018. Yeah, you're giving yourself quite another time. I think this time next I've month. I've learned. <laughs> yeah, this time next month, I think you, you can find yourself either already in the money or very, very close to it. I think you're going to get the 22s. Uh, Twitter's doing a, a good job right now, hanging high. And, uh, again, if this bull market continues, uh, rising seas lifts all boats, and it's going to be Twitter included. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, what, one other thing that the pay, we talked about PayPal and its Square last week, and the well, Square especially continues to hit new highs because they keep mentioning the, you know, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah, That's yeah. The, PayPal just like cooled marijuana off. stocks three years ago, anything with Bitcoin. Yeah, PayPal cooled off a little bit today. Uh, uh, Square trading, That's yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're playing on to that whole crypto hype. Uh, it, it is what it is, but at the end of the day, they're still both really great companies. I think you're going to see Square Trade cool off here in a couple of days too. Uh, yeah. eight, 89 on the RSI. It's hot. It's, it's, it needs a, a little bit of a cool off there. So I see a pullback maybe to the high 44s or mid 44s in, in Square over the next couple of days. If not tomorrow, but definitely by the end of the week. Okay. Someone else call. Thank, thanks again. Appreciate it, Ken. Yeah, all right. All right. Shout out to Ken. Uh, always going through quite a few stickers with him. I love that. I absolutely love that. So that's what this show is about, man. Going through these stickers and getting through them. CLSN also on the biggest gainer today. Not one of the you know top, but definitely was on the list top fifty in the exchange today. CLSN up seven percent. Doesn't have the most beautiful chart. Doesn't have the most beautiful chart, but uh, overall, you know, did a you know good seven percent day. I wouldn't say it's oversold. It's just kind of one of those things. Biotech play. Do your own research on it. I don't know what they're up to. Uh, do I have any long-term investments? PayPal. PayPal. I'm huge on PayPal. I think PayPal is going to be a hundred-dollar stock. A hundred-dollar stock. PayPal. I'm all in on that one. Uh, I got puts on, I just initiated them last week, Foot Locker. I think Foot Locker, people have over overreacted a little bit to that move on Foot Locker. They came out earnings and missed on the top and bottom line. The stock jumped up almost 25% uh, based on the fact that the losses weren't as bad as possible. I thought the move was an overreaction. So I've got some uh, March I've got some March uh, Foot Locker, and I, ha I hope to be deep in the money on the downside on Foot Locker uh, because they're expected to miss uh, this next coming one, uh, earnings report. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a few few long-term. Of course, uh, I mentioned how I got some some calls on, on the VIX, you know, for the huge turnaround. So I got a few things out there, a few things out there. USAK. Let's go keep looking at it. Let's keep looking at your tickers. USAK, US truck. I don't know anything about it. By the way, did you guys see that badass truck Tesla put out, man? If you haven't seen that presentation on what Tesla is doing or plans to do for the commercial trucking sector, you need to go see that badass fucking truck that Tesla has uh, coming out in 20, they said 2018, right? 2018. Craig G, no, I'm out of Roku, Roku Craig G. I'm out of Roku, dude. I took a, I posted my loss on Twitter. I'm out of Roku. Yeah, I just took the, took the L and ran, man. The, the float is just too fucking small. Uh, there are no shorts available. You can't get any downside pressure on Roku. So it is what it is. I'm just out. I just took my L and left. Carlos Roby said, you saw it? Yeah, that's a badass fucking truck, man. That is a bad... That's going to change the game. $5,000 is all that's needed to put your deposit on it. Obviously, not everybody who's buying, who's putting the deposit is actually probably going to be able to afford the truck. But um, I don't know what the total cost is. They didn't really say. They're just saying that they're taking 5000 to put your deposit down. Uh and now, by the way, that five thousand is non-refundable too. <laughs> so, you know, if you're gonna put your five k on it, you ain't getting it back if you can't afford it uh, when it comes out. Walmart, Walmart came out and said they already buying. Walmart is signed up, ready to go. So, shout out to you truckers who truck for Walmart. Uh, you're gonna be able to get access to those badass trucks. Um, Zero to 60, and what they said, zero to 60 in, in three seconds? Something like that? It's just ridiculous, man. Uh, Gucci said the presentation was raw. Yeah, but that's just kind of his thing, man. When you're a billionaire, you can do that, though. When you're a billionaire, you can win. And he was winging it. Yeah, he was winging the whole damn thing. But when you're a billionaire, you can do that. 
Who's going to tell you, uh, you know, otherwise? ACBFF, Aurora Cannabis. Uh, we mentioned here on the show that we like the other play better, the uh, Canopy Growth. We like the Canopy Growth better, but Aurora Cannabis is the real deal, too. I did a little bit of uh, Googling on them this week, and they're actually, they're, they, I mean, they got some things going on. You know, all the plays that are coming out of Canada, you know, look, the Canadians are just way ahead of us. And uh, the companies that are in Canada, licensed in Canada, they're benefiting from it. And that's why their share prices look like this. And the ones on our side of the border look like this. You know, that's just basically what it is. What's going on, bad scientists? So Walmart is testing the truck and not adopting it. Oh well, I mean, you know, that's you're gonna test it. They're gonna like it and they're gonna buy it. It's a badass truck. If if they can do what they say they're gonna do, Walmart's gonna buy it. It's a gimme. Five hundred mile an hour range. On on a single charge, zero to sixty time is insane. You know. It, it, it's it, you just got to see the presentation if you haven't they're going to buy the truck if it if it does what it says it can do ltum i know their stock uh tesla stock isn't doing so well but i mean just keep doing what they're doing and uh it'll be right back to where it was lithium corp l2 ltum up 21.7 percent you know, a lot of these lithium plays are running right now. I don't trust any of them. Most of them are, are pretty scams. Uh, I think we had another scam that I brought. That was a lithium play last week, that LRTTF. This is a scam that I'm talking about. Looking for the big drop here. So, man, if I had any long term, I got a, a play in here. Looking for that to drop lower here if we get some, some risk here. So, I'm going to give it up. What's going on, Jeff Thayer? SPI tomorrow is day 10 to regain compliance from NASDAQ. Uh, it's been above a dollar. I could expect positive spike into the news. Yeah, we'll see what happens on that. I mean, nice little one point something percent gain today. Uh, below average volume on SPI, but, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I just feel like it burned a lot of people on that reverse because uh, you had some people who were expecting a move even on those, you know, cheaper those those lower price shares. You said uh, best short for 2018. Be careful. Be careful. That's what they said about uh, Apple this year. Everybody said Apple 2017 was going to be the, the 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 stock to short. You guys remember that? I remember all that conversation 2016. Where are they at now? BPI Bridgeport Education. Bats, is this the one I told you? Yeah, this is the one I told you about this weekend, Bats. Yeah. Uh, Bat scientist this weekend was looking, you know, at these commons that are being given away here and for, for literally pennies on a dollar. And I reached out to Bat scientist and I said, hey, man, I think you need to look at, this was, I think, Saturday. I said, hey, I think you really need to look at BPI. I should have jumped on it myself because uh, it came through in one of my scans. And, you know, I was like, okay, man, I think I need to give this to Bass. This is kind of his thing. And sure enough, nice uh, move today, up 6%. Where management does these, you know, secondary offerings where they're kind of hooking up their friends as well as underwriters for shares for pennies of the dollar. Nice run on that today, Bridgeport or Bridgepoint Education. Appreciate it, Bats. What's going on, Victor? All right, let's take a look at the tickers you guys are putting up. H-A-Q-F. Alfira Incorporated. Tell me about it. Uh, half a million shares traded today. Average is 4.9 or 4.5. What's going on with the volume? Or just a low volume day today, I guess? Not sure what's going on with that, but... Uh, nice, nice, well, decent day. I mean, you, you know, it's green. Green is green. Green is green. Uh, kind of, kind of expensive though. Trading at sixty-five times, uh, 
PE of 65, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty high, but uh, I'd have to go look through, you know, its competitors to see whether or not that's that's comparable for its sector. But that's not a cheap stock at six uh, 694 already paying 65 times uh, earnings. So be, be, be aware of that. Be aware of that. So something must be brewing there. Something must be brewing there per the chart. I mean, obviously, this has been ripping for the last two years. Uh, so figure out what what's the story there because obviously somebody's willing to pay premium a big premium to to play that stock HMNY sold today at 1450 Jason yeah HMNY is kind of one of those stocks that you know it can squeeze at any moment I think you still got a lot of people who think there's some meat on this bone particularly now at the 316s uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you got some guys in there who are still short or even added on to a short. So be very, very careful uh, for those of you guys who are looking to short this back to the teens, uh, or excuse me, the, the low tens rather. Because uh, there's, uh, I, I see the $3 worth of meat on the bone you're probably looking at, but be very careful here. Be very, very careful here. And by, by being careful, uh, there was one pump and dump, ITUS. ITUS is bouncing off that 50-day moving average. We completely forgot about 50, about uh, ITUS here on the show. But if you guys remember, this was a pump and dump. This was a pump by uh, the James Connolly guy, PennyStockProfit.com. He pumped it up. He came out like literally at the top and said, "Okay, guys, congrats. Uh, we're moving on to our next pick next week." Stock dumped. And it actually held the 50-day moving average, and now it's bounced off of that. A couple red days here and there, but it's it's moving higher. Uh, the company has done a pretty good job of you know getting in front of investors and spitting out news like crazy, which it wasn't doing prior to this move here, prior to that move there on the 18th of uh, last month. So keeping investors engaged. Um, you know, not putting up as much volume as it used to, but it's trying. It's trying. Gucci, you said that ACBFF will be a $50 stock one day? Give me a call. Let us know why. MSMW. Let us know why. MC Endeavors, OTC. Penny a share right now. Uh, going for a penny a share right now. Uh, don't know much about this company. I'm looking through the news here. Uh, you know, they, they do a good job of staying in front of it, though. I see here they're quite busy in September. November's been pretty quiet so far. I see only one news release here back on the 13th. Overall, though, I mean, you got a nice little trend starting here. Uh, that's the 50-day moving average. It's looking pretty good, but I can see here volume is definitely an issue uh, per these little candles, uh, excuse me, these shadows on literally every single candlestick. So you're not really getting a definite move. A few here and there, but uh, looks like volume is an issue where you have these really wide ranges and on bid and ask spreads. Uh, any good plays for China plays like CFS, Xnet? Look, I mean, we still have a few Chinese plays that are running from last week, man. A lot of those plays you just put up, they're still hanging up there. Uh, you know, they're still hanging. You know, CIFS, I mean, they're still hanging up there. I wouldn't dare short this. This was, again, we talked about this last week. Don't even try to short this thing, man. I think the float is ridiculously small. Trading at a very low PE, only eight times. And you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch that. Whatever this this company is, don't know much about it. Do your research on it. But it's just continuing to move higher. Here's another two and a half percent gain today on this stock. All right. So these Chinese little pump and dumps. Uh, and this one, I don't think it is a pump and dump. It's actually a, a legit play. I mean, it's got a decent market cap. Well, for a Chinese. Uh, the float's got to be ridiculously small. Look at that. It's only got $119 million market cap, excuse me, and it's a $60 stock. So, yeah, you know that float is small as fuck. What's going on, Kenny Dutton? Yeah. 
Somebody talking about he brought eBay on the dip. I'm not a fan of eBay. As you can see here, the bull market has really missed eBay. Nah, I'm not a fan of it. Not a fan of eBay at all. I, I think it was, uh, you know, look, it's still an incredible business, right? I mean, it's still an incredible place to find deals. Uh, but eBay was a champion when retail just didn't understand, uh, you know, didn't understand online and didn't understand the idea of, of hey, when you go online, you've got to make it cheaper than it has to be in the store. And I think people have figured it out. And I think that's why eBay has kind of lost its edge. You know, a lot of the things you see on eBay, you know, now, especially for new products, you know, you're not really getting a deal. You're not really getting a deal. You might as well just go on Amazon and just buy it new. You know, so eBay has now become a place just you, you, you just get the used stuff. And it wasn't always like that. Xnet, yeah, Xnet is insane. That's another low flow Chinese play. Xnet's insane. That's another low flow Chinese play. You know, you, it is just killing the shorts every single day on this. And you know, people are trying. You know, people are trying to short these things, and they're getting killed all day, every day. That's why, if you look at uh, DCIX today, DCI, uh, DCIX today, I literally watched that move. Could have did something and, and didn't do it. You know, DCIX today was a squeeze from hell in the morning. That was that was painful, man. It didn't even stay up that long. It's just the fact that somebody got caught slipping, covered, no buying up there at the 1240s, 12, yeah, 1240, 1245 level, and came right back down. But the fact that it's just squeezed like that. And DCIX will eventually come down, right? It will eventually come down. I see somebody talking about dries in the chat room. Uh, last week was an incredible week for shipping. I don't, I don't even know why. If you remember, mid to late 2016, what had these stocks running was the Baltic Dry Index. Uh, that had reached an incredible large number. And all of them started running like crazy. Uh, I... I let me see here. What what's uh I don't even know what the ticker for that is. What's the Baltic Dry Index ticker? I know there's a ticker for for that. And basically all the shipping stocks run off that 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 index number. Alright. Dry's doing insane. Dry's okay, yeah. Dry's still trying to get back to that trend line. You see I created that trend line uh for dry's to hold it, broke it, so we figured it's gonna go lower. It's fighting to get back on there. Look at Dry is fighting to get back on there. And uh, now at 415, up 7.5% today. Uh, so Dry is getting back to making some gains here. Uh, let's see if it has the strength to get back up there. You know, It was doing really well from late September into October, um, early November. It eventually uh, lost some steam there as volume started to decrease and dry up and those higher prices couldn't be maintained and you saw it break the trend there going lower but you know a, a desperate attempt today at uh bulls jumping back on dries yeah gucci all those stocks are running right now man all those stocks are running right now we got stocks like microsoft still running yeah somebody brought up microsoft free ride you know microsoft is a champion again you know, I remember when I first learned about investing, and many of you guys can probably remember those days too. Companies like Microsoft, I mean, they were like twenty five dollars, and that was that was it. It just never was going anywhere else. You know, I remember literally being in class and playing one of those like Wall Street games. You know, used to play in school, and everybody would pick you know all the companies they knew, right? I mean, because that's how you were taught. Oh, I'm gonna pick walmart and microsoft and i mean that's just kind of what you did because you didn't you didn't really know any better and microsoft was those stocks that just kind of never went anywhere but here we have uh microsoft putting up an incredible 2017 and uh you know ripping it dude absolutely ripping it microsoft you know, not putting up incredible volume too i mean 27 times earnings putting up 16 million so we got a lot of companies that Aren't anywhere near as big, not putting up the same kind of volume, but, you know, still putting up numbers. 
said Microsoft will be $120 by the end of 18. Absolutely. If this build market keeps it going. Absolutely. I have no doubt. Microsoft 120 can definitely do it. Intel can do it. PayPal is going to be 120. Nvidia probably be 350 for maybe 400. Who knows? Absolutely. I, I expect another 100, 120% next year from Nvidia. All right, let's keep a look at it. BUDZ. BUDZ, Buds, OTC stock. Now, this is one of the great OTC companies, cannabis companies, on OTC markets with beautiful share structure. These guys aren't, whoever is behind, they're not diluting their shares. Uh, it's been a while since I've read their 10K, but they're not giving away too many shares for pennies on a dollar. I mean, so many OTC companies, you know, they they're, they got all the warrants up the ass just giving shares for 15 cents, 20 cents. You don't see that in, in, in buds. And that's kind of why the stock is able to just kind of maintain you know, above a dollar stock price. Obviously, it's had some better days. You know, it's had some better days early 2017 and whatnot. Uh, but the stock can move. The stock can move. 550,000 shares traded today, and it's up 23%. That's a deep, that's, that means it's got a pretty decent float. You know? Now, how legit is the business? Eh, that's a different conversation. That's a different conversation. Beautiful share structure, though. Yeah, Nvidia's on a tear. Oh yeah, the bull market's been has been a disaster for shorts, and you know, guys who have the patience have been making all the money. That's been my biggest problem. I had uh, there was a trader on Twitter t asking everybody what their biggest problem was, and my problem, and I see it now looking and and looking back on my 2017 trades and whatnot. I'm looking at trades that I make back in, in January or March, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, damn, if I would have just stayed in the trade, bro, just stayed in the trade, you're looking at possibly three to four, you know, 30 to 40 to 50 percent more money if I just would have stayed in the trade. There's some some tickers that I would have doubled my money if I would have stayed in the trade. You know, if we go back to um gosh what's the ticker uh not nvidia what's what's what was that other play that's losing its ass right now um not nvidia what's the other what's what's nvidia's or former um they made the k6 process amd 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 is the ticker you know you're looking at stocks like amd you know stocks like amd Going back into, you know, late 2016, early 2017, you know, some trades that you wish you could have just stayed in a little bit longer. NVIDIA as well could have stayed in a little bit longer. I mean, so 2017 for me, and I'm sure for many of you, has been really a, a test of, you know, okay, things have got to, you, you got to change it up a little bit. The money's good. But it could have been a lot better. Could have been a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Micron, MU. I mean, there are a few plays. I, I completely slept on McDonald's. I completely slept on McDonald's. I mean, I, I you know, McDonald's is one of those plays. That just, you know, buy a couple call options, put some time on it. When I saw McDonald's break out of the 125, uh, 2016 high, that should have been an easy gimme, right? You know, that should have been an easy gimme here. Breaking out of the 120, uh, the, the 120, uh, one, yeah, that 130 high. Missed opportunity. That's $35 a share that, that could have been gained there. So, you know, it's all, it's all, you know, hindsight is 2020, but again, you know, when companies break new highs, you're supposed to jump on to them. You know, that's that's technical analysis 101. Especially good good companies like like McDonald's, good large cap, 
Stocks like that. Thanks for bringing up EKSO. Yeah, EKSO. Uh, that that earnings weren't impressive, but the fact that they came out and he said that Ford Motor Company is testing one of their products. Uh, Ford Motor Company, one of their plants in Detroit. They're actually using one of EKS's EKSO's suits, where basically they're helping. Uh, the employees lift products, you know, that they couldn't lift on their own, helping these employees, um, you know, not suffer back pain. They got some of the employees to come out and say, look, I love this product. It's allowed me to do my job even better. And EKSO is soaking it up. I mean, they're absolutely soaking it up. They're talking about it. You go on stock twits. You go on on Twitter. There are really a lot of people excited about whether or not Ford may come out and said, hey, we're going to look, give us 100 of them. Is that going to be anytime soon? Not exactly. All they're saying is that they're testing it in this particular factory. But they're getting squeezed in there. I mean, EKSO, look, it had very bearish momentum. You've got some some shorters in here who are up pretty big. Who are up pretty big. Now, you're going to have to do your research on what's the percentage. I know every, you know, every website is going to give you a different name and a different number in terms of how much is short and whatnot. EKSO, let me do a uh, shout out to Equity Feed. Best scanner on the market. Get two weeks free. Equityfeed.com. Yeah, see, so equity feed is only giving me 4% of the flow to short. I honestly suspect it could be a lot larger than just 4%. I mean, with this chart, with this chart, I you got to tell me there's a lot more than 4% of that that's short. Uh, share short the prior month. Uh, 607, nearly 700,000. Share short currently as 883,000 shares right now that are short in EKSO. And they're getting squeezed. They're getting squeezed. When you pull up the EKSO chart, I mean, that's basically what you're seeing. You're seeing a morning panic of covering. And that's literally pushing the shares higher. And they're holding. They're holding these new levels every single day. We'll see what happens tomorrow on EKSO. But every single morning, the stock, you're getting this nice little... You know, push the cover here. Push the cover. And if they're not careful, they can squeeze this higher. You know, these shorts are going to run. They're going to make it look like HMNY. Uh, do I think a bear market is coming? Not if they get this tax plan. Not if they get this tax plan. What's going on, Demario? Been a minute. This bear market is not showing up if they get that tax plan. We've talked about why. Now, if they don't get it, hell yeah, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna sell off at least 30, 40 percent. Because there's no way they're gonna be able to put up some of these companies are gonna be able to put up to some some of the same numbers they put up this year. It's just insane. This year was a great year. D R R X. Uh, Direct Corp. I don't know much about this stock, man. Don't know much about uh, Direct Healthcare. Uh, looks like uh, something happened here. Beautiful falling window. Oversold for some time, working its way higher. Uh, now at a dollar nine, working your way through the gap. So, good luck with you on that trade, D R R X. All right, that's what's up, Demario. Just get your money, man. Do whatever you got to do to get your money. E R R E L Y, real industry. Real industry, secondary smelting and alloying of aluminum. All right, nine and a half million shares traded today. What's going on with that one? I mean, the uh, average is only two point eight. You saw 9 million today. Looks like they had some kind of court judgment. So you got some court issues going there on uh, 
R-E-L-Y, dirt cheap stock, only 52 cents a share, up 16 cents today alone, almost 45%, 46%, I'll give it to you, 45.92 to be exact. I'll give you that one on that one. Let me go go ahead and give you. I'll give you the kids here because that's a nice win for him. That's a nice. That's a nice win. That's a nice win, and you're still oversold. Look at that. Look at the RSI on that. You're still over. You gained forty six percent, and you're still oversold. Where were you coming from? Thirteen on the RSI, maybe maybe nine or ten, possibly. And you're still oversold on a 45% gain. That's insane. That's crazy. And that's a two-day move. So you had Friday and today coming from 20 cents a share. That's a big move. What's going on? Cristile? Cristile? I, 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 you know I've been fucking up your name. HLG? HLG? Hong Lang Education Group. Yeah, this is an international company. This is a depository shares. Plays a little differently. Very low, very low volume. Uh, but if you're going long, that's that's the kind of the, you know, yeah, it doesn't bother you. And I did some more research on that bats, and you're absolutely right. I mean, if you're going to do a low volume play, then you got to be uh, looking to go, you know, nowhere near. Uh, fewer than maybe three or four days. You really do have to be trying to get the meat of a large move if you're going to go with these low volume stocks, uh, similar to HLG and and some of the other ones out there. So yeah, there are people who do obviously buy these type of stocks, you know. But every time I see these kind of plays, you just go through those Tim Sykes lessons where it's like. If it's less than 500000 I don't even look at it. I just can hear. I've watched the DVD so many damn times. AMD got its 10 AMA. Okay. Yeah, AMD really sold off after the last earnings report. Uh, you know, I think people played up that Bitcoin business a little bit too much when you talk about AMD. People played in that, that Bitcoin a little bit too much. FRFL or FR... LF Freedom Leaf Freedom Leaf 6 cent stock OTC uh, All right so this comp <laughs> this this little research company called Lud Lud Ludlow Research they're basically a pump and dump operation uh you know it's not a publicly traded stock but it's this company that specializes in these OTC companies and they create research reports that aren't really based on much research because there's not much to say about many of these OTC companies and they put an upgrade on an OTC stock which is absolutely ridiculous unless we're talking about a stock that delisted and and you know now is trading on the OTCs um, but yeah I see Ludlow research is on when you see Ludlow research they're really scammy. They're pretty scammy. All right. And that's just an opinion. I don't have facts to back that up, but I've seen them on a couple stocks that at one time were a dollar and they're nowhere near a dollar now. And many of them don't even trade anymore. And they gave them, you know, upgrades. So just be aware of that. All right. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Oh, speaking of companies that get delisted. That just had to be the fastest delist and relisted I've ever seen. OHGI. You guys remember that? OHGI. OHGI delisted and has regained compliance with the NASDAQ. And now they're back. They're back on the NASDAQ. So this had, I think it was like, what, two weeks? They were trading on the OTC markets. So that, that was pretty fast. So, yes, you can come back. You can come back. You got to get your money together. I mean, as as and you can see the volume is paid. They paid the price with the low volume. Uh, only sixty two thousand shares, but yeah, form just recently was on the OTC exchange. Now back on the Nasdaq. Uh, CSIQ uh, OTC. Are they trading on the OTC. Obviously, is a Q stock. 
So that does mean they are bankrupt, right? Or is that just the name? Okay, no, actually, that's just the name. All right. That's just the name, CSIQ. Am I right? Or are they bankrupt? Let me hold on. Let me see. I think that's just the name. I don't know why you'd want a name with the Q at the end. Um, like, yeah, okay, yeah. That looks like that's just the name. Well, the Q designation at the end of the ticker typically stands that your your company is going through a bankruptcy. But uh, I guess that's just the name. Okay. Yeah, don't know much about it, though, man. Let me know what's going on here. Canadian Solar. Solar Play. Don't, again, you know, let, let us know. You guys know what the call-in line is right there on the top of the screen. 305-600-2896. Yeah, I got slept on that play too. Carlos, M I K. Uh, the Michaels Company. Don't know much about this one. It's where the at hundred moving average. You're below the hundred, obviously below the. Um, all right, yeah, you're below the hundred moving average. So where's the two hundred at? Let me see. Okay, so you're you're getting close, but. You know, below the 200, you know, it's on the daily chart. You're bearish. And you just broke it, really. When did you break that? Back on 1026? All right. Not the bullish, most bullish pattern in the world on the primary trend. Uh, but, you know, looking bearish, trying to work its way back up there. I mean, trying to work its way back up there. Uh, but being that's below the 200, I wouldn't even look at it below where the 200 is asking, which is that 2060. That's where the 200 is. 50 or the 100 excuse me is at 2020 i wouldn't even look to go long anything uh, under the 200 moving average i think the 200 moving average is a very powerful level uh and to you know to, to stay under that you attract a lot of uh you know you attract a lot of shorts uh, you know below the 200 you attract a lot of selling too you know uh, other traders see that as well and that's that's very negative sentiment and you know it keeps a lot of capital away Keeps a lot of capital away. Uh, that's where you are in MIK. So wouldn't go long there if, if, if you know, if I'm you, uh, Carlos, unless you, you get back to, to breaking that. And that would be a great catalyst to get in on the stock, breaking the 200-day moving average. You can do some research on that. That's a huge uh, catalyst for, for increased volume and more buying activity. FNKO. FNKO. Yeah, don't. What, this looks like a pretty new issue. Very low volume, 376,000 shares. Uh, they're in the dolls and stuffed toys business. Uh, 370,000 shares traded. Uh, trading right now at 15 times. Uh, market cap, 181 million. Yeah, I gotta let the gotta let the chart kind of develop here. Gotta let the chart a little, you know, develop here. See what's what's up. Obviously, he had a really good day opening up. Didn't hold it very well. So you're already kind of seeing a little bit of weakness there, but we'll see. Let the chart develop. Funko dolls. Yeah, we'll let the chart develop. We'll let the chart develop. All right, so pulling up some tickers we looked at last week. Uh, G-R-O-W. G-R-O-W. 12% gain. On that move, today's. Uh, where is that? Okay, setting up a, a new, you know, I guess, the, you know, not the be most beautiful trend. But uh, look, I mean, look, it's a, it's a, it's a higher low. It's a higher low. And now at 287, that's G-R-O-W. Yeah, we took a look at dries already. Let's see what else you guys are bringing up here. Twitter. Yeah, we just had Ken talk about Twitter. Twitter is okay. Twitter is okay. And I think, you know, if if they can do what they, what they say they're going to do, then, you know, that's going to be really interesting. If they come out next earning cycle and say, hey, we could possibly... Uh, or we did beat, 
we did beat them. We're finally we're we're finally profitable. That'd be huge for a company like Twitter. You know, so if you've got the money, I mean, why not just get some calls and go through that? Go through that. And by the way, that was a really great article on Market Watch talking about, you know, if you had a thousand dollars ten years ago, what that thousand dollars would be worth today in some of these stocks. And Netflix, if you had a thousand dollars in Netflix uh ten years ago, you're at one thousand dollars would be worth fifty one thousand dollars today. Huge, huge gains on Netflix. I got that article right there. I put it in the in the chat room. Interesting article. All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I've talked a little bit about trading volatility here. Uh, it's not something that I don't think anybody in the chat room does. Uh, but there are guys who short as well as buy volatility. You can do it on the option side as and and on 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 stocks uh, by trading either ETFs or well actually only ETFs uh, and buying uh, options on those ETFs. Some of the power popular ones, UVXY, a uh, very very popular one that's selling off. It's probably going to be breaking this again again if, if we continue this bullish momentum. Uh, what other ones? Uh, CVXY. All right. So, those of you guys who are interested and you just feel like you can't do, you can't follow companies, you don't understand what's going on, you don't know how to read the data. Maybe if you want to follow volatility, that way it's a more macro look at the market and you're not having to worry about what individual companies per se are doing. And you just get yourself involved in, you know, the macro side of everything. So that's volatility trading. And there's some guys who made some pretty good money on there. You can reach out to them on, on Twitter just simply by, you know, hashtagging, hashtag volatility. That's, that's their kind of, that's their hashtag. So you can see a lot of volatility traders and a lot of volatility trades under that hashtag. Hashtag volatility. If you want to look up all the great, ETFs under that space, you can use the ETF database, and I'll put that. I'll put that in the chat room as well too. Hopefully that comes up on on you guys' end. But it's just another way to trade. I wanted to bring to your attention. I mentioned it here and there, but I I, I just did some reading this weekend, and uh, you know, look, nothing's easier, but it's just a lot simpler in terms of just not having to deal with a lot of those other you know things you have to deal with when you're talking about actual companies Benny Boom says selling put spreads yeah I mean yeah you'd sell puts on on volatility where it's right now it's making people big money big big money Gucci said uh <laughs> Bitcoin 10 years ago you'd be multi oh absolutely I mean Absolutely. I, I, I always say, look, if I could find a way to build a time machine, that's what I probably go back and do. If there's one thing I do, I just go back and, and, you know, buy Bitcoin. Take all those military checks instead of wasting time, you know, playing, you know, uh, what was that game that was hot back then? I kind of forgot it was uh, one of them online fantasy games. Or at the USO, because we used to go to over to the USO and play online games all the time. I would have just been buying Bitcoin. All right, go on uh, BLDR. Let's take a look at BLDR. BLDR is the ticker builder's first source. Uh, so far, look at that. That's a nice little trend on 20, 2017. Builder's first choice. I'm interested to see how this company may not, must not be one of the companies that's being hurt by the tax plan. Uh, when the tax plan passed the house, you had a few of the large builders sell off. So this company must not be or have, a, you know, a huge part of their business in, you know, expensive residential properties. Because if you remember correctly, a lot of the builders sold off a couple weeks ago. Uh, if I can pull up 
some of the tickers on that we can take a look at it general contractors residential construction yeah there we go yeah like the Lenars let's see here uh, Lenars we got a couple sell off I'm talking about the expensive home builders let me see here Oh, am I mistaken here? Because I'm looking like I'm looking at a chart that actually looks pretty good. Let me zoom out so I can get a better picture. But so this is a daily chart. I thought we saw. Hold on here. Pool was it? PHM was our Detroit Pulte Homes. Oh no, they're on the tear. Hold on here. Am I mistaken? So I guess they're not going to be TOL. All right. Yeah. Okay. So the Toll Brothers. There we go. That's why I, I knew like there was one day that some builder got hurt hard. Toll Brothers. Now, Toll Brothers, I do know that Toll Brothers has multi-million dollar properties that they've built. I mean, you can order a multi-million dollar property from Toll Brothers. And many of the other ones, too. But I'm surprised that Toll Brothers are the only ones that took a big hit. Okay. Let me see here. Yeah, I mean, uh, overall, it looks like the construction business has been doing pretty well for 2017. I don't. This is an insane chart. I mean, look at that. That's that's ridiculous. That's a pretty ridiculous. All right. Nah, I, I forgot. It wasn't Call of Duty. What was hot back in? Uh, gosh, I forgot. It was just the one the nerds all play, man. You spend like 20 hours on it. I, God, I can't remember. Uh, man, it's going to bother me that I, I can't remember. Well, you had your clans. You had your different races. Well, they all have. All these damn games have different races now. STRL, STRL. World of Warcraft. There you go. Wow. God. There you go. World of Warcraft. I can't believe I forgot that because I, I, I was playing that game. Oh, my God, bro. You'd go there Saturday in the morning when they opened up, and then we wouldn't leave until night, dude, just playing at the USL, bro. Ridiculous. STRL. Sterling Construction. Sterling Construction. 1730 up 3% today. Nice move. Nice move. Low volume. Decent market cap, though. Is that PE right? It's got a forty, a four thousand PE ratio. I'm seeing a PE of forty five hundred. That can't be right. That can't be right. That PE ratio can't be right. I'm seeing a PE of four thousand. That's insane. Novt. Electronic and components. This kind of reminds me of uh, STM. This kind of reminds me. You you got a lot of these circuit, you know, companies. And I, I posted something on Twitter about that. How you know during and I was reading this in this in that book, How to Trade Like Buffett this weekend. And they were talking about how you know Buffett was able to profit off that 1950s 60s run on like circuit boards because like you know there were so many different circuit companies out and everybody was in that space that was like the bull dot com rush for that time of the 1950s and 60s nobody talks about it now uh but during the late 50s early 60s jfk and all going into that presidency or whatever uh that was the big thing on the stock market was you know computer technology you know what i mean that was like NOVT, NOVT, nice play. Uh, but again, reminds me of uh, STM. And we're going through it where you're seeing a lot of these semiconductor plays, all these plays that, that could eventually play into AI or artificial intelligence. You know, they're all winning right now. They're all winning right now. Eventually, the sector will mature and we'll find out who the real winners and losers are. Uh, but right now, Anybody who's in that space is, is going to, you know, kill it. Not all of them. I mean, obviously, you got some losers, but uh, I'm sure you have some stocks that are running that shouldn't be. 
Uh, but in due time, they'll they'll correct themselves. They'll correct themselves. Said Warren Buffett is a genius. Yeah, Warren Buffett is a genius, and he's also lucky. He was born literally in the perfect time. I mean, you know, he's a post-war baby. Uh, well, actually, I think he came before World War II, right? I think it was like slightly, just a couple years before. Or he might be a baby boomer. Uh, but, you know, Japan was knocked out. Europe was knocked out. So he, he, he was in the right place, right time, had the right connections. Uh, a lot of luck. A lot of people, he's a genius. He's a genius. I'll give him that. But he was born in the right time and he was doing the right things. And he met the right people going to school, you know, under Benjamin Graham, who was by far the best of his time. You know, Appreciate it, Benny Boom. Yeah, I'll get you guys out of here. It'll be a, a quick show tonight. It'll be a quick show tonight. I'll make sure I start getting here at 10. Or excuse me, at 9 rather, at 9. But I know all the West Coast people, you guys are just getting started, man. The night just ended over there. OTTV, OTTV, Viva Entertainment Group. We know what they're about. They're basically a, a OTZ version of Roku. That's all they are. But this is, again, another company that just kind of continues to dilute their shares. Could it be a great company. And I don't want to keep beating that horse. I've said it several times. Could be a great company, but too much dilution is just driving them in the ground man that that stock should be way higher than what that is but when you're just giving away shares uh i mean you're just going to drive away money and people are going to get burned and lose is robin hood a good day trading app they're getting better they're getting better i wouldn't say robin hood is for day trading i would never do robin hood for day trading but they're coming up with a a app to use on your desktop computer that looks promising that looks promising that's all i can say about them cali rob day a i o or d a i o data i o corp yep another one of those tech plays that's running this is a smaller business hundred million dollar market cap you know again I don't know what they're up to. They're labeled as a computer programming company. You know, are they are they you know, they're up you know, wow, they this stock is up. This stock is up almost 300%. This stock is up almost 300% since April, man. Yeah, it was going for $4 a share. Now it's going for thirteen ninety six. So yeah, stock's up almost three hundred dollars, over three hundred dollars a share, uh, since since April. Since April, so I give that to him, man. That's big money. Uh, that's big money. That's a Nasdaq play. That's a Nasdaq play. That's a nice looking stock. It's high up there. I'm going to keep an eye on that one, man, because, you know, some of these stocks that are just doing too much. I'm going to keep an eye on this one, DAIO. Yeah. Oh, of course. I mean, uh, who would who, who wouldn't have loved to have gotten that move? And again, you know, only 600,000 shares traded, and the volume was relative, much lighter, you know, in, in back during those times. So, uh, you know, I guess don't let low floats scare or low volume scare you away because money is money and daio has made a lot of money this summer appreciate it andrew let's keep it moving ttwo take two interactive now take two these are the same guys behind uh what's that what's that game again you guys know what it is i keep thinking san andreas uh, that's all I know because that was like the one that I bought when as soon as it came out When San Andreas came out I snatched San Andreas GTA there we go Grand Theft Auto I still think San Andreas well 5-5 five, five was awesome too 5 I think but San Andreas was just so Bold for that for that time man for that time that San Andreas was just so bold 
you know, the shit that it allowed you to do, and that was that was just so bold to see it on you know, a game that big on console. Yeah, press like in here. Appreciate it, guys. Press like in here. Always grateful to see guys who are coming in here willing to go through tickers with us. And uh, I still get cracked up the fact that more than 10 people were willing to come in here and talk about stocks. You know, because even today in my daily life, you know, you got people who just, oh, man, that investing is too risky. I, right? You know, so you got to kind of keep that shit to yourself sometimes. That's how it feels anyway. JBT, John Bean Technologies, 0.19%. I don't know anything about it, man. Uh, another low flow, no low volume stock. Uh, but boy, look at that chart, man. 2016, 2017 has been tearing it up. Don't know anything about it, though. John Bean Technologies. Uh, just looking at it, I'm, I want to say John Deere, but john bean i don't know anything about it but it's listed as a industrial machinery industrial machinery sector so learn more about the business see what they're up to but obviously they're they've been tearing it up over the last two and a half years uh coming from 25 dollars a share now to 114 dollars and 50 cents a share for john bean over the last uh two and a half years three years to give it exact i mean three years uh, up big big money over 450 percent over 400 my yeah, about 415 percent big money on that yeah berkshire b shares yeah Ber the berkshire b shares those are the uh that's kind of like they say the poor man's way of getting into the in, into the into the game for at berkshire for a reason trading view has not let me pull it up Unless I sign something, I don't feel like signing whatever that is right now. But that's supposedly like the poor man's way of uh, getting into the conference. And I've never actually even seen a recording of the Berkshire Investors Conference. Has anyone seen? I've never even seen one. But supposedly it's like the ticket everybody wants. You know, but never seen, never even seen it. Appreciate it, bundle up. All right. Just trying to document the market, man, and document these gains. Electro Scientific Industries, ESIO. Yep, another play. Who's bringing that up? Cali Rob. Yeah, you're, you're looking at all the. I mean, that's basically what it is, man. You got to understand what's gotten us to this point. What's gotten us to this point in the market is like six stocks, bro. It's like six stocks. You know, we've had a few other companies crush it. You know, we Caterpillar, a few other, you know, olden day industrials. You know, but for the most part, you know, there's like six stocks that are that are gotten us here. So many of these companies like ESIO, DAIO. Many of these, they're, they're they're just enjoying the wave, man. They're just enjoying the wave. They're not going to be here, you know, six, seven years from now. Not all of them. Some of them, but not all of them. Any booze stocks to get a holiday hit? What is An Anheuser-Busch? I think it's like N A N S. What's Anheuser-Busch? Are they still public? Yeah, A, B. Uh, hold on. No, no, no. Are they still public on the U.S. side, Anheuser-Busch? I know. Are they still public? I don't remember their ticker, though. I don't remember their ticker, though, because I know they're still public on, yeah, crypto coins. Well, at this point, I don't want to go back too, back too far back into crypto, but at this point, you know, everybody's, you're either going to be a Bitcoin or you're being nothing else, man. You know, it, it, it was only a matter of time till those other ones started, you know, just, just falling off. Is it that simple, bud? Is it really just that? Okay, it's, I know, all right. It says Belgium, though. Hold on, B-U-D. 
Okay, yeah, it is. It is. Okay. All right, so they are just selling ADRs. Why aren't they? I'm surprised they don't have any common shares on our on our exchanges. All right. Okay, it is what it is. Uh, they got ADRs. They got ADRs. Uh, I don't know. I think in, instead of doing the beer, why can't we just go and possibly do, you know, the retail outlets that sell them, right? And when you talk about retail, oh, uh, well, Kroger, okay, wow. Ugh. I was going to pull up, like, the Krogers and Winn-Dixies of the world, but, man, they're getting killed here. Hold on. Here's Kroger, not looking so pretty. Uh, where's Albertsons at? Is Albertsons still publicly traded? Or maybe not. What other, what, let me see here. We, I know we got some other retail stocks out there. Uh, supermarket plays. Let me pull some up here. Uh, consumer. Food and beverage. Major process. Retail. Department stores. Grocery stores. There we go. Super value. SVU. Damn, are they all getting beat up? Shit. So, oh, by the way, super value reverse split. This was, this stock had went all the way down to like 320 and they did that reverse split. I remember this company because they wanted to sell one of their most valuable assets. What was that, that, that product? It's that cheap ass grocery store in the hood that doesn't give you plastic bags. You guys know what I'm talking about? If you're from a poor neighborhood or you grew up in a poor neighborhood, you know what I'm talking about. It's that retailer where you go there and all they can give you are boxes. So you go shopping in the carts and when it comes time to pay for your food, you put all your, your groceries in a box. They don't give you plastic bags because they, they save money. Save a lot. Boom. That's it. There we go. My man knows what I'm talking about. Save a lot. All these, all these does that. All right, I didn't know all these. All these does doesn't give plastic bags. Shit. All these pays their managers like fifty five k. Man, I don't know why they got money to pay fifty five k, but they can't give you no plastic bags. Shit. Uh, SVU, yeah, yeah. So they they SVU owns Save a Lot, and they were looking to unload that. I don't know if they of. If they've unloaded it yet or not, it's been a while since I've looked them up. All right. So there are a few. Man, there are not too many grocery, publicly traded grocery stores. I thought there'd be a lot more. But I know Consolidation has definitely hit that, that space. Consolidation has hit that space. Um... Walmart, you know, I think Walmart's a great, great, great stock to play into Christmas. Uh, stay away from Foot Locker. I want Foot Locker to come down. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't care what anybody says. Amber Crombie and Finch is probably going back to zero. Uh, that's not the ticker. Hold on. A and F. Amber Crombie and Finch, they're probably going back to bankruptcy again. Uh, some stocks, some companies that have been doing well, you know, Dollar Tree, is Dollar Tree still looking good? Yeah, Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree still looking good. You know, I think I think little companies like, you know, and it's not little, it's a $22 billion company, but those small retail stores where it's kind of like going in and out, I think those those companies will always have an ability to kind of hang around. Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Big lots. Yeah, I think they'll always be able to, you know, find a market. You know, those kind of stop and go type places. You know. But I think I think uh time time is 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 a counting down for Walmart, man. They they're killing it now. They're killing it now, but it's their their size the size is unsustainable, man. You you can't do online be a, ma a master at online and continue to 
to have 120,000 employees and, and think you're going to be able to keep up with uh, what the future of retail looks like. So something's going to give. Something's going to give, and it's going to happen within the next five years. Something's going to give there. Uh, Macy's, yeah, Macy's, interesting play on Macy's. Uh, you know, earnings, if you remember, earnings came out in Macy's. They came out and basically said that, yes, they're losing money, but they're not losing as bad as everybody thought. Very similar to the Foot Locker situation. And that's and that's the new thing for stocks to run up higher now, is to come out and say, we're supposed to be losing money, and yes, we are losing money, but we're not losing as bad as possible, as bad as everybody thinks we are. So that that has the stock going up. I just don't I don't understand it. Because when you read the reports, it's clear as day. We're losing our ass. You know, uh, uh, traffic is down in all of our stores, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, people are buying it higher. People are buying it higher. I don't get it. I don't get it. Iceberg J said Roku. Yeah, I, I got out of Roku, man. I posted that on Twitter. Here's the thing that's going on with Roku because volume is crashing on Roku. I mean, the volume is horrible. You know, it's it's going lower on 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 volume every single day. I think today they only put up like 5.8 million. 5.8 million on volume when we talk about Roku. In fact, I can make this disappear. But here's the thing. The, the stock is insanely low float. Dude, the float is like 8 million shares or something like that, right? The float is like 8 million, bro. It's something ridiculously low, like 8 million. And there are no shares to short. Whoever's got them short, they're not covering because it's, it's not going higher. So it could be institutions. All right. And it's just kind of what it is right now when we talk about Roku. You know, it's just, does it belong up there? Hell no. But I didn't want to continue to allow um, expiration to get closer and closer and closer. And then me just, you know, watching my losses gain day to day and day. So I held these options for a week. I don't even like holding anything for a week. And I held those options for a week, and I'm just like, man, just fuck it. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Some guy called and he said, uh, sell Walmart at CNBC today. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, a similar play to make my money back. That's why I'm sour on Foot Locker because the float is way larger. Right? Float is way larger. Very similar thing. But this one, I learned my lesson. And Roku is I'll never, ever do another two-week option again. That was that was a very rare thing for me. I wasn't even, that's not even my big thing to do. It's just that I thought it was going to come down. And I underestimated what low float really means. I mean, it, it literally means it can stay up there for weeks. It can stay up there for weeks if you have a couple large investors who are just not willing to, to to play the downside move. So uh Foot Locker is kind of one of those places very similar to Roku, right? Came out and said we're losing money, but not as bad as we we thought we were. Stock gapped up higher. I think it's overbought. And I'm looking to see the stock uh pull back to to 37, probably going to be a lot lower, but I've given myself now multiple months uh in case but i don't think i'm going to need that much i'm not going to need that much but i just wanted my next option trade i just was going to be a lot more secure yeah uh do i ever day trade large caps and google and stuff like that uh, nah man i mean i just can't put on the kind of size that makes sense in terms of options yes nvidia is probably is the closest I've, I've came to it i played Apple earnings. I played Apple earnings. It ended up selling off. Some of you guys may remember that. I had to buy a deep in the money call because I was just not confident. And it started selling off the very next morning. If you remember Apple earnings, it popped after hours. And then the very next day, it started to sell off. Luckily, as I said, I had those deep in the money calls. And uh, I barely lost any money. 
Said Foot Locker, eleven point two five percent short on the float. Yeah, yeah, it's got a, it's got a, it's, and that makes sense. That makes sense, Andrew. For you know, if you read that that earnings report, that makes perfect sense for them to be short that heavy because they're not doing very well. And again, you know, I'm finding security in the fact that the float is relatively large. It's over a hundred million shares. So um, unless they come out and say they're getting bought out by Amazon, uh, I'm not feeling any kind of way about, you know, being squeezed or anything like that. All right. Let's keep it going. Any any more OTCs? I know we've been mentoring uh, a lot of NASDAQ plays. I know you guys like that that the NASDAQs now. And, 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 and again, it's nothing to the OTC traders because I know we started the show, you know, two years ago talking mostly about OTCs, but it's been a very different market, you know. It's been a very different market. And I get the emails, oh, come on, you're not talking about OTCs anymore. You don't talk about OTCs anymore. I, I mean, I'll bring it up if you talk about it, but, dude, I got to follow the money, man. I got to follow where the money's at, bro. You know, we can't find these stocks that are up 100% and then the next day down 40% and the day after that down 30%. I mean, shit. Yeah. I saw somebody a while ago bring up GE. Uh, GE is probably going into the 12s, man. I mean, that's that's just a horrible situation on, on GE. It's just so sad to see what happened to them. Uh, guess. And who who still wears Guess? Who the hell still wears Guess? Guess actually beat. That was really weird. Guess actually beat. I have never. I have not seen anybody wear Guess. Ecob. Ecob is another one. Just to float. The float is ridiculous. They need to just cancel some shares, man. They need to cancel some shares, cancel some warrants, something, or that stock is never going to move, Jay. Jay, you got to look at that float on ECOP, man. It's ridiculous. It's like in the billions, bro. I'm talking multiple billions. It's not like one or two. I mean, it's like six, seven billion, something ridiculous like that. And whatever they got up there at OTC Markets is wrong. You got to actually go look into their filings. It's a couple billion. That ain't that ain't going nowhere. Uh, HGSH China real estate. By the way, Chinese real estate. Don't anybody don't let any, anybody fool you to think that China is a, is a communist country. That's on paper, but people in China can own property. Okay, they can own property. People in China, you know, are growing richer by the day. They're coming to America. They're going to Europe. They're going to Canada. They're responsible for some of these huge spikes in, in real estate prices out here. Please don't let anybody fool you and, you know, call China a communist country. They're doing a lot of Chinese people who are living better than you. All right. They're living better than you. All right, let's keep it going. And that includes me, too. I'm not saying that like it don't include me, I mean, you know. These people are, you know, supposedly a communist country, but, you know, they got free education over there. I'm not trying to compare. I'm just saying college in China ain't costing nobody no money. All right, PLX. PLX, biotechnology play. Biotechnology play, Protalax, uh, PLX. Don't know much about it. I know we we brought it up a couple, couple times, but uh, haven't done any research on the stock. AXDX, Accelerate Diagnostics. Man, that chart is all over the map, bro. Uh, I'm good on the chart, though. I'm, I'm good on these charts when they are just funneling like this between, you know. What is that, 12 and 28? I mean, it's just kind of all over the place. I would just wait for the solid breakout at some of these highs here. And it looks like it's struggling with these high 20s, high 30s. Uh, yeah. I, 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 when the stock doesn't know where to go, I don't know where to do with it. All right. Somebody bringing up BOTZ. Global Robotics. 
Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting, Jeff, about this bots play, man. I keep forgetting about this bots play. What was the name of the ticker that somebody had brought up last week about the one that's Watson choosing stocks? It's a it's an ETF controlled by AI, artificial intelligence. Who, who who brought that ticker? What was that ticker again? Artificial intelligence ETF, B O T Z. Bots, B O T Z. You guys might want to get into that, man. It's actually, you know, kind of reminds me of a of, of Bitcoin, you know, kind of one of those things where you're seeing it now at $24 and, you know, a couple of years from now it's going to be at $140. That's, that's kind of how I'm looking at this thing right now, man. <laughs> Let's look at the weekly. All right. Yeah, the weekly is even insane, bro. Uh, looks like a lot of volume is coming into this play. Now we're going to these higher levels, man. Uh, wasn't too popular earlier in the year, but uh, whoever got in it has been enjoying the ride. As we see now, 2425 and BOTZ. Yeah, that, that, that kind of reminds me of one of those things that you're going to look at a couple of years from now like why didn't i yeah yeah I, I like the idea of a straddle just because i want to be able to have that downside protection go way out on it too jeff go way out on it because it's got to be dirt cheap now right it's got to be pretty dirt cheap now i mean at 24 dollars, it shouldn't be too expensive to go far out on on this stock i don't have my options table open on me right now let me see here. Uh, let me go with my tasty works. Let's see what. So I'm curious to know. I'm, I'm curious myself. But yeah, I would I would go way out. I would go way out. You know, at twenty four dollars, this is probably your opportunity to be able to buy a leap on it for dirt cheap. Uh, I know everybody in. And their mama would love to go back to 2017 and buy some leap options on Netflix or NVIDIA at the beginning of this year. I know I would. I know I would. I would have loved to be able to buy some leaps. Hell, even on the, on, on, you know, the spy or the cues. Yeah. What's this ticker again? Bots, B-O-T-Z. Damn, you can't even really go far out. See, I mean... Okay, they're they're smart. They're not even letting you go far out. They're only giving you some June contracts, some March, and some December. So yeah, they they, they you know the, the CBOs. They're not stupid. You know they're going to put out the options that that still give the house a chance to win. But I think even going to these Junes, which aren't pretty liquid, I'm surprised they're not that liquid. But I I'd, I'd still play them just because you got it huge open interest on the call side look at that four thousand open interest contracts on that 25 dollar june and that's easy money we're about to get into the money and it's pretty liquid hold on bid it ask is only a nickel apart that june 2018 jeff i'll look at that bro gucci's talking about him bots yeah that's a good ticker name Netflix is a good uh, investment. Yes, Netflix is a good investment um, if you're going to play the international side. So Netflix is already losing a little bit of, of, of market, what's the word for, market percentage? I don't know if there's a proper word for it in terms of the percentage of the actual market within the US they're losing you know on the US side not not losing they're still the leader but they're losing market space they got a lot of competition you know you got sling out there you got Roku you got uh, Hulu I mean, you got a lot of competition in the US but Netflix internationally market share thank you bets internationally there's no competition there's no competition when we talk about Netflix on an international scale. So if you're playing Netflix, that should be the only, that's your only catalyst moving into 2018, 2019, because you're not playing for the U.S. side. The U.S. side p pays for the international expansion. So, you know, you got to play Netflix for what they're doing.
in some of these countries in, in Asia, in the Middle East, in Africa. That's that's Netflix right now. In fact, if you read the last third quarter announcement, they, they literally say that. They literally say that. I mean, that's that's going to be their meat and potatoes in 2018. And the U.S. Netflix subscriber is what's paying for this incredible expansion. And that's why they recently raised prices. They recently raised prices. A couple bucks. A couple bucks. All right. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing uh, that ticker up. That AI-powered equity ETF. We pulled it up a couple days ago. It was losing its ass. Now it's gotten, it's, it's working its way higher there. Hold on. What's going on here? Looks like Watson got that bug fixed. Because uh, Watson's been kicking ass over these last couple days. So I don't know what's going on there with Watson. All right. But volume, he's still losing volume, though. We'd like to see that volume come back. I, that, that blue is pretty scary there. We'd like to see more volume coming in there. Only 81,000 shares traded today. But uh, shout out to Watson getting back up. Uh, these last couple of days, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it now. I'm gonna watch it now. Yeah. You said bots thirty plus next year. Hell yeah, dude! You see that chart? Come on. You see that chart? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't short that thing if you paid me to. Yes, indeed. Same with you, Woody Wright. Yeah, I'm about to get you guys out of here. This is a little short show tonight, but I've been on since 9.30. It's been an hour and a half, but the time goes by so damn fast when we're talking about these tickers. Let me see. Oh. All right, and the next market day comes at you fast, man. The next market day comes at you fast. All right, let's see here. Let's go. All right, so for tomorrow, though, continue to keep your eyes on these low-flow Chinese stocks. Continue to keep your eyes on these low-flow Chinese stocks that guys have been using to scam. You know, I I, I, I I don't know what 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 to say. I mean, these guys are just scamming the shit out of people. And for the most part, they're still buying it, man. You know, you guys you guys are still going along these these Chinese pumping dumps. Let me see. What was that one from? Uh, did I write that down? Some of those Chinese plays from, from last time. Let me see if I can find some of those real quick. Hold on. To look to bring them up. And these guys, that, and by the way, these chat rooms have no soul, man. They have no soul. LEDS was, was one of them. LEDS was really interesting because that spiked today too. LEDS. LEDS, what else, uh, what are some other ones? Uh, if I remember, WPRT was hot. Damn, that sold off like a motherfucker. Woo! Down 10% today. SORL, that gave back today. HL, that gave back today. See, this was very few times you'll actually get a... A two-day move. Very few times on that. Get rid of that line. Uh, Ultra Petroleum putting up another day of gains. I was up on Friday. Or, excuse me, Thursday. Uh, but going back to these Chinese stock. MOSY. Semiconductor play. Chinese stock. Low, low float. It's a Chinese semiconductor play. Low float. Down only 1.5%. So that's interesting. Down only one and a half percent today, so I, I just keep an eye on that. 
You know, still got somebody willing to hold that. Uh, CCL. Carnival Cruise Lines. Uh, nothing. I'm not sure why we looked at that. Fang. Phoenix American. What did I see? I see Mark. Mark was one that was uh, a leader last week. I see there on the 14th. Big day for Mark. Big day for Mark. It's a nice play on those. So yeah, we, we we've had a few we've had a, a few good plays that are continuing to to lead the pack. You know, K S I C A S I, Biotech, L A B D. Yeah, okay, that's the uh, E T F. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. What happened to that uh, Ying Ling or whatever? What's the ticker? I can't remember the ticker for that. Ying Ling Energy? Ying, Ying Li Energy or some bullshit like that? OSTK? Yeah, man. OSTK. Overstock.com. Overstock.com has broken. I mean, they've really done a good job of tapping into that Bitcoin ICO kind of thing. So now they've got some fanboys in there who are... You know, playing Bitcoin and Overstock. I mean, that's just kind of what the, what's going on there. That's what's going on there. But I mean, at the end of the day, the business is still doing pretty good, though. I mean, if you um, saw their their earnings report, they're they're doing pretty good. I mean, it, it jumped off there uh, when they came out the other day. So the business, the underlying business is is still doing good too. So it's not all just Bitcoin. Uh, they're doing a really good job there, at Overstock. All right, and they're killing eBay, by the way, too. I mean, people, we just got done talking about eBay a few moments ago. Uh, but Overstock is killing, killing them. Is Apple still the best long-term investment? I mean, right now, who can say otherwise? I mean, you know, I, I, they were talking about the Apple car. That's gone away. I don't know what Apple's going to look like in the future. But uh, Apple is still an incredible consumer company. Uh, everybody doubts them, but they continue to hit it out the park. The Apple iPhone is still the most demand, uh, in-demand phone on the market, period. I don't care where you are in the world. If you have money uh, and you have a choice, you want to use the Apple iPhone. It is the status symbol in terms of uh, phones everywhere. Uh, Google's got a very comparable product, but it just doesn't have the same draw, right? I mean... This new Google phone probably beats the new iPhone in terms of camera quality. Have you guys seen those pictures? It's absolutely insane on this new Google phone. But you just don't have the same draw. You just don't have the same draw. So, uh, But how long can you continue to survive on just your phone? You know, We've got to be honest about the fact that Apple computers, they're not doing so well. If you look at the numbers, Apple computers aren't doing so well. You can't tell me that Macs are as popular as they were 10 years ago. Who would agree with me on that here in the chat room? I mean, Macs are nowhere near as po popular as they were 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I remember going to places like Best Buy and Walmart, and you'll see a video game, or you'll see a computer game, and you'll see a PC version and then a Mac version. Now, you don't see that at all. You don't see that at all. You know. And I just don't hear about those Mac fanboys anymore on the piece on the on the on the computer side. On the computer side. I don't I don't hear about them anymore like that. Now they're still powerful fucking computers, hell yeah, but I just don't hear that Mac fanboy love on, on, on computers like I used to. Alright? So again, guys, thank you for joining me. It's been a, another great show. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties earlier in the show. I don't know what kind of happened there. Uh, but we got it all fixed up and had a good show. Uh, tomorrow, you know, we'll see what happens, man. But again, you know, this week overall, where I'm not expecting a lot of volume. I'm going to be here today, tomorrow, and we'll see what else. Maybe I'll come back later on in the week. But uh, I'm not expecting a lot of volume this week, a lot of big moves. 
uh, on anything we've talked about. You'll see a lot of irregular moves. Uh, you know, I have no doubt we'll see continued plays kind of like MICT that ran on Friday and then dumped today. We'll see a lot of those low float out of nowhere stocks run uh, because that's kind of the environment that, you know, low, dull weeks like this kind of trigger where you'll just have stocks in the middle of nowhere that will run and they're coming out of chat rooms and uh, just don't just don't get caught up into it and then I'm losing your ass. Don't get caught up in losing your ass on them. All right. So with that being said, I'll ring the bell. Appreciate it, Carlos. End the show there. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow to, uh, you know, we'll see what else was hot. Obviously, you know, in the small caps, it'll be a whole different group of stocks. Uh, what we're familiar with. We've had a couple good, you know, couple, you know, several day runs now. Mark is being one of them. This is kind of hot though. I know we got that Chinese stock running. That's like 69 bucks. We got, you got a few plays that are out there. Uh, you know, just be, just be careful on them. Just be careful on them. So with that being said, the market continues to go higher overall. If we look, pull up the cues, slight pullback today, but the market still wants higher. Uh, I don't know why that 154, the, the mark is, you know, these cues are really having a problem with the 154s. Uh, I know some of you guys in the market, uh, uh, in the chat room said that the market wants to pull back. I, I, I agree with that, but just the fact that every time I, I've convinced myself of that, then we have, you know, a day like this. If you guys remember, I had these lines on this chart. Right, and we're like, oh shit, this is pulling back. This is pulling back. Oh, yeah, buy puts, yeah, yeah. and then this happened, and then this happened. So, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. I want to see a red version of this beautiful Marabatsu, but that it does have a bit of a wick to it on the up and down side. But I want to see that happen on the downside before I say anything more about this market selling off. So, until we see it, we're going higher. Until we see it, we are going higher. With that being said, guys, thank you so much. Stock Z, Andrew Gladys, Artie Buckley, Gucci. Still waiting for winter weather? No, I don't want that winter weather, man. By this time, I thought I was going to go to Vegas, but man, I, I don't know. Then that shooting happened and all that crap. And then I've been reading about, I just saw this thing on CNN because guys breaking into houses in Vegas. I was thinking about going out there to Vegas, man, getting out of the winter. But somebody told me it's cold as hell in Vegas at night, man. At night, it's like freezing cold in Vegas. Like, fuck. Man. Cali Rob, bad scientist, Kaiser C., Said PC is for intellectuals. <laughs> oh man, Cali Rob, appreciate it, man. Linda McGowan, hello, thank you so much. Came in a little late, we're on the way out. Donzel Essex, appreciate you, bro. Gregory Hall, who else was in here? Jeff Thayer, A Bro, Iceberg J. Jason Carrera. I always have like 90 people in here. Nobody calls up anymore. I don't know why y'all don't want to call up, but I mean, it's cool. Y'all just chilling, watching the show. Uh, Mr. Lloyd. Shout out to Mr. Lloyd. Everybody and everybody. Happy trading, everyone, tomorrow. See you back here same time, same place tomorrow. Take care. Deuces.